right, don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at thehellblaze.com. Promo code GOODFELLOW1BOXING. Get you 18% off the 100% all-natural products. Website, promo code, description. Thanks. All right, man, let's talk a little bit about uh, Canelo, Golden Boy, and what's going on, Ryan Garcia, before I do. Um, don't forget to check out the Patreon. I will be rebooting it. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm going to try to put up the Sean Porter, Errol Spence uh, prediction video up uh, tonight on the Patreon. It won't come out till Monday, and I'll put up some other stuff. So check out our boxing tier. It's only $2. It links in the description. Um, and then other than that, man, uh, this weekend we got Peter Quillen taking on Alfredo and Gulo. So check that out as well this weekend. If you want to get your boxing fix, it's on FS1. All right, if you didn't know, uh, Peter Quillen a couple weeks ago, I believe, was supposed to fight Caleb Truex, Caleb Truex. And him in the first fight, it came to a, a no decision, technical draw, or whatever, because uh, the clash of heads or a cut or whatever. And they were supposed to fight for the mandatory for Caleb Plant. But Caleb Truex blew out his Achilles and then... um. You know, now he's fighting Angulo. Now, Chavez Jr. wanted to fight Angulo, but now he's going to be fighting Danny Jacobs December 14th on the Kel Yaffe and, um, and Juan Estrada card. I like Juan Estrada, one of my favorite little fighters out there, fighters in general. So, a little bit of nuggets right there. But, hey, yesterday, Canelo and Kovalev did their thing. Um, they met up, and I'm not going to say everything I was uh, heard about the fight, but, hey, it is what it is. Um, sorry, a little bit under the weather, but... um. Yeah, man, I watched some of the videos, and um, Kovalev looked bigger, um, looked taller, obviously. Um, and he looked healed up for the most part. So um, I think 10-week camp or 9-week camp for him, I don't think that's a problem. Um, it might even be make him more sharper. You know, it's the old school fighters used to do, so I'm not worried about the turnaround. It is what it is. He might be even more sharper and more in rhythm. He don't need to spar as much because he just fought Vars Anthony Yard. A lot of these dudes spar so much, which is sparring is very dangerous as well. I remember Joel Diaz, the coach of uh, Timothy Bradley, told me years ago when I did an interview with him. Um, yeah, I used to do interviews, foods. When I did an interview with him, he had a, a training accident that he got clocked upside the head. And um, he wasn't right after that. So sparring is real, well, sparring accident. Sparring real dangerous, man. So. A lot of these guys spar so much because they don't fight enough. They fight once, twice a year. And sparring is, is another tool to stay sharp when you're not fighting the way you should fight. You know, or how much you should fight. So, um, other than that, they were taking selfies together and they was looking real nice. Don't seem to me no bad blood. To me, it had a Mayweather type of Conor McGregor feel to me. To it. it just felt like a circus. It felt like a clown show. In my opinion, it had a lot of electricity there. A lot of people there were supported. I didn't even know it was yesterday. Uh, maybe I should check the press release and try to get on that press release uh, form. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it piques my interest. Um, anytime somebody jumping up another weight class to challenge a good fighter like Kovalev. And Kovalev has been a throwback fighter throughout his career. You know what? I don't really like what he represents about the whole monkey and the racist stuff he got going on. But Kovalev has been a throwback fighter, man. You know, you can't find too many fighters like Kovalev who took on the best challenges and, you know, and at the end of the day, been knocked down, got back up, been knocked out, got back up, and uh, came back and rebuilt his career. If any fighter in the boxing is a throwback fighter, I think it is Kovalev. Taking on any and all challenges, he was willing to fight Bevel, he was willing to fight Gosvick, Perturbia, but uh, Canelo chose to cherry pick him. And, you know, it could be a cherry going wrong, but I think Canelo um, knows what he's doing. Canelo, you know, is considered the face of boxing um, in a lot of people's opinion. But it just felt like a kind of a circus. It didn't have an authentic feel of a fight uh, to me. It didn't have bad blood. It just seemed like they both was happy to be there and get the bag. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I can't, you know, you know, not say they're not supposed to get the bag and tell you, Oh, Errol Spence and Crawford should get the bag or Javante should get the bag. <clears throat> I try to be fair and firm about those type of situations, man. So at the end of the day, um, I will watch the fight. I'm not going to lie. It does intrigue me. Um, I think Kovalev, um, you know, should have a chance. And then I don't know if they talked about the way yesterday. I found out like a week or two ago. I did a video if you did miss it. Um, that It's going to be at 175. Once again, Canelo won the fight at 172. It was relayed to me that the WBO was not going to sanction the fight at nothing but 175 pounds. Therefore, Canelo has to petition or, excuse me, put an application in to get into the uh, whatever they call it, to get into the top 15 or get ranked high enough for the fight to get sanctioned. 
So at the end of the day, they said the WBO would not sanction that fight. And it's at their discretion, unless it was at 75, but it will have a 10 pound rehydration clause at 185 pounds. All right, the morning of. So Kovalev, it shouldn't really hurt Kovalev. It might help Kovalev be a little bit more in shape, but uh, it may or may hurt him. But at the end of the day, it'll have a penalty on it, just like Danny Jacobs. And people crazy to think Canelo going to go to 175 and not put a rehydration clause on Danny Jacobs. But I mean, on Canelo when he put one on Danny Jacobs. All right, but hey, it is what it is. Um, it just had uh, it just had a, it just had a funny commercial feeling to me, man. Um, it just felt real, real, you know, just just too cordial, man. In a fight, I want to see bad blood. You know, I want to see shit talking. I want to see that type of stuff. But you know, it is what it is. When you don't, when you don't, a lot of these guys now is trending. Everything trending, but the best fight and the best in your division. Now you having guys jump up two weight classes, Rigondeaux, Mikey Garcia. Um, you now you having Canelo. Now you having guys jump up weight classes. And cherry pick the weakest link in the division, not Mikey Garcia's standpoint, or or try to get the biggest money or whatever situation may be. So now it's trending to jump up and wait. Kell Brook did it, <laughs> you know, Mir Khan did it, and, and, and fight these impossible fights or whatever the situation may be. Um, now it's trendy to do that. You know, I'm waiting for the best fight, the best to be trendy. But hey, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Now, the zone said they're not playing any more inflate, inflated prices. I will talk about that. Mike Coppinger, and I put all this in the description. Mike Coppinger got that tweet. And they said they're not paying for people, overpaying people to come to the zone no more. And at the end of the day, it's not a surprise. Eddie Hearn said that he said we're going to have to pay these dudes way above market value. But eventually, the prices will come back down um, to market value. So he said it long when he first got to the zone that he was going to overpay these guys to come over to the platform, but eventually that money will come back down. So Eddie Hearn did say that. So you are so he already warned us it would happen. So people acting like this is a you know a shock or oh my god the zone is going broke. Eddie Hearn said that to begin with. So at the end of the day, I just so happen to remember that and plugged that in my mind. So I don't think it's a huge shocker. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. At the end of the day, it is what it is. You can't be paying these dudes, you know what I'm saying? And what Jay-Z said, he said, these, dude, uh, these dudes going broke trying to keep up with me. All right? Same thing. These dudes going broke trying to keep up with Al. They spending their money trying to keep up with Al. Real talk, man. Al Heyman, like J-Rock said on Twitter, Al Heyman ro rose the prices in boxing. He set the platinum standard. At the end of the day, his legacy could be a lot of things. Along with Floyd Mayweather, they, they got fighters paid more their market value. They rose the price up. So to accommodate, you know, uh everybody else fighters and people saying, you know, Jose Ramirez might say, Oh man, look at uh, you know, Earl Spence, he getting paid over there. You know, you gotta pay me this. And that's what it is. Everybody looking at PBC and they looking at Pacquiao going over there being happy. And it'll be a a death blow if Earl Spence I mean Terrence Crawford went over there and got paid and he was happy. You know, <laughs> that's gonna be the crazy thing about it. But a lot of guys tend to go with top rank. Because of the signing bonus, Bob Arum pay you that shit in cash. He gave Adrian, he showed Adrian Broner like two hundred fifty thousand. Broner was smart enough to take it. He actually signed David Benavidez or tried to, and gave him two hundred fifty thousand in cash. But David Benavidez had to give it back because it was a breach of, breach of contract under Samson Boxing. So Al Hamer returned that two hundred fifty k because Bob because Bob Arum was claiming that his contract with Samson Boxing wasn't a real contract or it wasn't really valid. And David and then Samson Boxing went back and got their fighter from Bob Aaron. But you know it is what it is, man. But hey, you know, the zone can't be paying these dudes all this money and they not getting subscribers. The thirty day trial went away quicker than quick. And they rose their prices, they doubled their prices. And also, and I'll link all this information in the description, they got a deal with Comcast. <clears throat> okay? They do. They have a deal with Comcast now where um according to Yahoo Sports the app will be featured on the Comcast app section. If you hit the Xfinity button and go to apps, you see Amazon Prime, Netflix, YouTube, YouTube Kids, and you even see Pluto TV, which is completely free. My kid loves Pluto TV. All right. So at the end of the day, the zone will be featured on the, the on uh on Comcast. Now, I thought they had a partnership to get a television channel on, but reading is reading is fundamental. I'm glad I did read. So. <clears throat> they app will be featured on the Comcast cable set box by the time Triple G and Derbachenko come on. There's no free child on the Comcast, but 
um, you can still have to pay to subscribe. So maybe you could pay to subscribe through your Comcast bill, like Netflix. I don't know if that's going to be a thing. And also, they give them some free trials through some other shit they got through Comcast. It'll be an article I never heard of. But, hey, that is what it is. But, hey, other than that, let's talk about Ryan Garcia. The reason Ryan Garcia got the co-main event um, versus Ramiro Dunn, the reason he got a new contract is because Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez is the reason Ryan Garcia got treated right because Canelo was about to leave Golden Boy and head somewhere else, like I reported. Now Oscar De La Hoya, the zone is doing everything um, they can to keep Ryan Garcia, or excuse me, to keep Canelo happy. Canelo made sure Ryan Garcia got the co-main event versus Romario Dunn. He made sure he got a new contract. All that was Canelo's doing. Canelo made sure Ryan Garcia was taken care of, and therefore Oscar De La Hoya and Ryan Garcia relationship was repaired. Everything that had to do with that. It was nobody in Ryan Garcia team. It wasn't Ryan Garcia crying. Canelo made sure that happened. They want to do anything to make keep Canelo happy. And Golden Boy, once again, they got caught slipping. Uh, and it is what it is. And if you pay, pay attention yesterday, you know, everything is not so kosher between Canelo and Oscar De La Hoya. He was asked, and I'll put this source in the description. All of them be in the source links in the description. He was asked, you know, uh, Oscar De La Hoya said that he wanted to do, he wanted to do, um, he wanted to do uh, Triple G next year. And Canelo said Oscar does a lot of things, says a lot of stupid things. And, um, you know, him and Canelo ain't on good terms. And Canelo also said that uh, about Oscar De La Hoya is that, um, you know, he just part of my team. We just team. We on a working relationship. So they 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 not on the talking terms. I heard they ain't really talked in a long time. So it's more like a working relationship between Oscar and Canelo. So Canelo and Oscar ain't seeing eye to eye. Um, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a lot of people business wise that don't have a casual relationship that just do business together. You don't speak on, don't go out to drinks or they families don't chill together, but. For Oscar a couple of days ago or a week ago to say that Canelo was his, he was Canelo mentor. Usually, you know, you do have fucked up mentors. And, ask Andre Harrell and a, a P. Diddy, a P. Diddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, that's his name, Puffy, about Andre Harrell, how he got done uh, uh, dirty by him. But ultimately, that helped him out to be Trey Bad Boy and find Bicky Craig Mack and, and lift the Bad Boy label up. But hey, that's another story for another day. But at the end of the day, they not on talking terms. And really, Canelo really wanted to leave. But Oscar De La Hoya and his own is doing everything to keep him there. But he was just going to go over to the match room. But he is responsible for getting Ryan Garcia that check and that bag and that, and that co-main event. He specifically asked for Ryan Garcia or he specifically made sure Ryan Garcia got that co-main event. That was 100% all Canelo Alvarez is doing. And like I said, it ain't what you know all the time. It's who you know most of the time. And Ryan Garcia knew Canelo Alvarez. And he, you know, and Oscar De La Hoya put him in the camp with, with him. I think he aligned him with them. And now, you know, Canelo is making things happen for Ryan Garcia. So Ryan Garcia should forever be in debt to Canelo Alvarez for making that happen. But it's a fact that Ryan Garcia didn't want to fight Romero Dunn. And that's why he asked for more money to fight Romero Dunn September 14th. And Romero Dunn wore that shirt that said, keep, stop running, Ryan Garcia. And, you know, at the end of the day, people don't take Ryan Garcia seriously. Ryan Garcia, he doesn't train right, at least before he got with Canelo trainers. He throw everything fast. He's a he's a reality superstar, a reality TV star he tried to be. He chilling with Logan and the dude that's fighting KSI and he doing all this funny shit. And people just watch the way he trained to throw everything real hard at the same speed. Yes, he got skills. Yes, he got ability. Yes, he can fight. But really, nobody puts him in the same class as Ennis and Devin Haney, Shakir Stevenson, Christopher Colbert, or none of them. He's seen as an act and he's going to have to continue to fight that his whole career. But from not known, he was offered the Romero Dunio fight a month or two ago before September 14th for that date. He turned it down. We all know he was offered that fight once again uh, this past Friday before the Saturday fight. He asked for more money. He turned it down. Now they gave him more money to fight Romero Dunn. And that's just that's just seemed to be the trend. Go on social media, cry beef with your promoter. 
get a new bag. You know, but at the end of the day, it wasn't that him just crying. It was Canelo Alvarez that did the doing, and they paid him, and they wanted to do anything to keep Canelo happy because Canelo really wanted to leave, and he don't fuck with Oscar De La Hoya. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, Oscar De La Hoya keep putting his foot in his mouth, you know, about a lot of different stuff that he got going on, and that's that he doing. All this shit about, oh, you know, Canelo and Triple G next, and Triple G says he has no aspirations to fight Triple G until he busts the move. Triple G ain't done nothing. He want Triple G to go fight Demetrius Andrade. Or he want Triple G to go fight Jamal Charlo. Okay. And Triple G don't want to do it. So it's, you know, they restructured Canelo contract. Where he didn't have to fight Triple G. You know, if you don't know the story. Oscar De La Hoya promised the zone that Canelo fight Triple G. Canelo told Oscar De La Hoya. Don't tell the zone a part of the deal. I'm not fighting Triple G again. I'm not promising that fight. Oscar lied to the zone, Canelo, and, you know, the Canelo, excuse me, the zone put Triple G and Ca- Ca- Canelo contract in, uh, in Triple G contract, excuse me, um, and then when it didn't happen, Triple G threatened legal action, and then they went to Canelo, he said, I told Oscar not to do that shit, and then the zone, you know, restructured both deals, and they made, they whatever they did to make Canelo happy, and what whatever they did to make Triple G happy, they did that, okay, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, you know, Oscar De La Hoya is just messing up. And you see why Al Heyman stopped working with him. You know, he was playing with his nose. He was doing things to make the company messed up. It was a rumor that they offered him $100 million for a golden boy. He turned it down. And remember before the Floyd Mayweather and Canelo fight, he did all that shit talk how Canelo going to be Mayweather. And then come fight night, he go, he go in a rehab and he not there to support Canelo. Canelo wasn't happy about that. So... At the end of the day, you know, this company is on, on thin ice, all right? Because two of their biggest stars ain't happy. All of a sudden, Ryan Garcia happy. That's because of Canelo. All they got to do is keep Canelo happy, and they can't even do that. And you hear about the stories about Abner Mares saying when he worked at Golden Boy, he was mistreated. You know what I'm saying? He was mistreated by Golden Boy. He was sleeping in his car. Al Heyman pretty much, uh, you know, Changed his life and got got him money and stuff of that nature. You hear Eric Hunter, the fighter from Philadelphia, he got jerked around by Golden Boy. So at the end of the day, James DeBeast Wilson, the heavyweight that's supposed to fight like Mike Tyson, he did not he not getting no play at Golden Boy. Rashidi Ellis not getting no play at Golden Boy. So they don't do right by black fighters. That's just what it is. Period. All right, and they not doing no, no right by black fighters, man. So why would you know he goes out there and he says, "Oh, Bud Crawford needs to come over here because uh, Bob Arum can't give him fights." What what black fight? We you you got three black fighters that should be stars, and what are they doing? Or should be on their way to being stars? What are they doing? Use an idiot if you're a black fighter, you go sign the Golden Boy. Canelo and Ryan Garcia always will get preferential treatment. Had that been um, a Rashidi Ellis begging for a new contract or whatever. Well, dad gave him a new contract? No. They would either shut up and had to fight. Only Hispanic and Hispanic Americans, Mexican Americans and Mexicans should sign with Golden Boy. Not black fighters, but hey, it is what it is. It's Goodfellas Sports TV. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at TheHellblaze.com. Promo code goodfellow one boxing Get you 18% off the 100% all natural products. Lotion, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, deodorant, toothpaste, hair part made, much, much more. Website, promo code in description. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Once again, don't forget to check out our Patreon. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All those links in the description, including the Patreon. I will be doing that Errol Smith and Sean Porter prediction up on there tonight. And I'll drop some more gems on the boxing tier. So check it out. It's only $2. You want to make a donation, that link's in the description. Best way to donate, just share the video. And other than that, man, uh, just keep checking us out, man. Check us out on social media. Once again, all of the links in the description, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, hey, let me know what y'all think about the story, man. All the links in the description from the zone, Yahoo Sports link to the source links from Twitter, the whole shebang. And let me know what y'all thought about Canelo Kovalev press conference last night. Y'all know what the business is, man. Goodfellas Sports TV, one time for the one time. Hey.